Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are talking about Scott Carson's newest book, Where They Wait. Um, if you don't know, Scott Carson is the pen name for Michael Carita, who is a thriller writer. Uh, he is writing horror under the name Scott Carson. I read and absolutely loved The Chill and Atria Publishing. They sent me The Chill also. Uh, Atria Publishing was kind enough to send me a review copy, and an early reader's copy, and this one comes out on October 26th, just a few days before Halloween. Halloween. The show's called Halloween. Anyways, so uh, this book, I was very interested in it because I loved Scott Carson's, uh, well, I'm going to say first book, but it's kind of weird saying that for a pen name. Um, but uh, I loved The Chill, and I was hyped for this one. This one, unfortunately, did not hit as hard for me as The Chill, and I'm about to explain why. But for those of you who come in for the TLDW, Too Long Didn't Watch, uh, I'm going to give it four stars. I read this one aloud to my wife, and she enjoyed it. She also agreed with my points that I'm about to bring up. Um, and it just... <laughs> This is this is going to be something. Uh, it might be spoilery. Um, so if you're worried about spoilers, you can click away. Also, um, the reason I say spoilery is because I'm going to compare it to something that's not really ever mentioned in the book. Um, and I, I'm just glad I will say this. I read and really hated uh, Ezekiel Boone's The Mansion because it was a, like a reboot of The Shining with tech. Um, you know, with the modern technology, and this one is a reboot of something else. Um, I will get to it later in the review, so there's not a uh, spoiler right up front. Um, but the book is about um, Nick Bishop, who goes back home to Maine. Typical setup, setup for a, he's a journalist writer. Typical setup for a horror novel, um, it, which is something. Another thing that you know, I kind of, which led to me only giving it four stars. Just something you know, we've seen so much of. But uh, uh, he goes back home to because his friend Pat Ryan uh, gives him a job writing a piece on something called the Clarity app, um, and the Clarity at the the owner of the app gives Scott uh, not not Scott Carson anyways gives Nick Bishop the uh, a beta version of an app that is like a it's a, not like it is a mindfulness app and it's supposed to be able to change your dreams you know give you better uh, st mental stability all that stuff so it's be calming help with sleep all that um, things start going downhill very very quickly um, pretty much as soon as he leaves the clarity offices uh, the clarity offices I thought was what I thought was cool was they repurposed an old mill the Heffron mill um, to to make this thing and here in our town they are repurposing a gin mill uh, into luxury uh, apartments so if, if you read it, it's like oh they wouldn't do something like that it's literally happening in my town um, I don't know what it is about the why not just tear it down and you know build a new building I think that's what they did in the book but here they are literally just converting an old mill into luxury apartments whatever so uh, in the book uh, he, he Nick bumps into a bunch of people that he knew earlier in his life. His mother had a stroke on a trail, and so she's in a care facility um, in the town that he is at now. And he bumps in, well, not bumps into, but Renee uh, works for Clarity. She was a childhood friend. Um, I felt that I didn't feel her setup was was done as well as it could have been uh, right off the bat. She's uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was. Now that I'm looking back on it, it's just it, right off the bat. It was like, oh, the, the only thing that we were really told about is what how she was when she was a kid versus. No, we, we didn't get much about what she does now, what she likes, her likes, dislikes, anything like that. All we get is the backstory. Um, and, and with Nick, that's that's pretty clear also. And this this book does have a lot to do with memory, so I think it's important. It's just, I don't think Renee was fleshed out enough. It felt like she was just the love interest brought in to be just that, the supporting love interest. And that's another minor uh, complaint that I have about this book. Now, I think the biggest one is, and we're going to go into spoiler territory here, um... So if you're worried about spoilers at all, this is kind of going to give away the entire rest of the book, so you might want to click away. So spoilers in three, two, one, spoilers. 
So this felt just like The Fog, John Carpenter's The Fog. Um, I'm not sure if that was a remake of an earlier movie or not, but it felt just like it. It has to do with fog. Um, it has to do with shipwreck. It has to do with all that stuff. And I think that's the biggest reason why I'm only giving it four stars. I was interested and I enjoyed the book, but uh, it did feel like a modern reboot of The Fog with modern technology, which is one of the things that I didn't like about There's a lot wrong with The Mansion. Uh, that book, I, it, I, barely, I barely finished it. But with this one, Scott, it, Scott Carson, obviously, and Michael Carita, whatever you want to call him, um, he's obviously a talented writer. Um, but this one felt way too long. And I say that because there's a lot of stuff that goes on, uh, like you're reading a list of instructions. He walked out the door, he walked down the store, he, he down, down the steps, store, he walked down the store, walked down the steps, got in his truck, turned on the engine, pulled out of the drive, drove down the street. There's a lot of that in here. Uh, instead of just, you know, he, he left and drove to this place. Uh, there's a lot of that so much so that I got tired of reading it um, and that's another thing that lessened my enjoyment well the reason why I'm giving it a whole four stars instead of something like three um, is because I didn't feel that I, I never really wanted to stop reading even though those points it, it felt like filler constantly because um, the book is almost 400 pages long and I felt it could have easily been trimmed down by 50 pages just removing some of the what is it by rote um, the, the things that, you know, just the going through the, the meaningless stuff to get one character to another. Um, it's nothing like Bentley Little where, you know, he has to open up every single chapter with what the person ate that day and all that. But it, it kind of is because there's a certain formula here. Um, and you, you have your plot points that you need to hit and then you have to fill in the rest of it if there's not much going on because this is a very slow burn. Um, and then you get to the end and you you get all the revelations and everything everything comes together just like yeah just like you know your normal thriller um but the horror aspects i thought were done very very well and i enjoyed reading those especially uh mainstream horror uh is it's win some lose some nowadays especially with all these damn reboots instead of people doing original ideas um and i think this one is is one of those is it as good as john carpenter's the fog no um, it's nowhere near as good, but it is good. I enjoyed it, and most people who read this will enjoy it. Um, I, I fully expect to see uh, many five stars from friends um, because they're not going to be nitpicky like me, and they're going to be more forgiving of the reboot stylization, uh, the, the reboot style of the piece. Um, I, I just, I, I'm also, I'm also to the point where. I think I really enjoy book. I, I well, sorry, I really don't enjoy books about modern technology. Um, I, I don't know why that is. My friend Max Stark gave me gruff about this because uh, he said, "Well, you love the Chucky reboot. I love the Chucky reboot because it actually had characters that you know I could care about." And that's one here. I did care about Nick. I cared about his mother. I really, really wanted to see the villain in the story get his comeuppance. Um, and he does. So uh, all, all boxes checked as far as character, uh, pacing, and dread. You know the mounting dread throughout the book is good. And I, I just feel that it is going to be liked by, by, by most. Um, and for the most part, me and my wife enjoyed reading it. So four stars. I don't really, really want to give it three. I guess 3.5. That's what I'm going to settle on. I'm going to settle on 3.5 stars here. Uh, so I will amend my Goodreads rating. Well, actually, you can't because they don't do 0.5. You know, but there's that gray area between 3 and 4, Goodreads. You, you got to let... That's why I like book likes back in the day. Anybody remember book likes? Oh, God, what happened to that place? Anyways, um, but uh, yeah. So ha have you read an early version or are you coming to this uh, review uh, because you're thinking about reading the book? Or did uh, you... Is the book out now and you were coming to watch... The this video now that it's out. Whatever, let me know your thoughts about the book down there in the doobly-doo, whether or not you loved it, whether or not you hated it, whether or not you felt mad about it. But if you felt any of those things, let me know why in detail so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another 30 episode of 30 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Here at the end, uh, I really hope... <laughs> I really hope I don't shoot myself in the foot here. I know this wasn't a final copy, but it was riddled with errors, and I do hope 
Uh, that's why I'm putting this here at the end. I do hope that the book is cleaned up better before it goes to publication. Okay, bye-bye.